Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at some more Brawl with Feather the Redeemed. But first a quick rant about the Brawl Days event. As you might have noticed, I haven't actually entered the event yet since I'm opposed to the idea of having to pay 10,000 gold or 2,000 gems just for the privilege of playing Brawl, when we should be able to play Brawl all the time. And uh, if you want to just unlock Riss, you can just use a rare wildcard to get it. It's not worth 10,000 gold just for Riss the Redeemed. So yeah, vote with your wallets and kind of oppose the idea of having to pay all this gold or gems just for playing a normal game mode that you should be able to play all week long. Speaking of which, if uh, you want to play Brawl and it's not a Wednesday, you can visit arenabrawls.net, which is a website that kind of matches you against other people that are also looking for someone to play Brawl with. And you can even play Historic Brawl if you want to use one of the Historic Commanders or use some of the cards that rotated out of standard. So I highly recommend checking out arenabrawl.net. The major drawback, of course, being that you don't get to complete your daily quests through Direct Challenge. So hopefully one day we'll be able to play Brawl every day of the week. But for now, this is probably the best solution. So let's dive into our deck list here. Our commander Feather, the Redeemed. 3 mana for a 3-4 Angel with flying, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature we control, exile that card instead of putting it into our graveyard as it resolves, and if we do, return it to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. So our deck is all about playing cheap creatures and then pump spells that we can return back to our hand with Feather in play. So let's take a look at the list here, some cheap creatures including Giant Killer, and we also have a Lorun Enforcer to tap down opposing creatures, as well as, of course, being able to kill a creature from the opponent with power 4 or greater with the adventure. We've got Healer's Hawk as a nice cheap evasive creature with flying and lifelink. We've got a few mentor creatures in the deck as well, and the Healer's Hawk pairs very well with uh, mentor creatures and pump spells. We've got uh, a couple pump spells, of course, at one mana. We mostly want our pump spells to be one or two mana, so we can easily play Feather and one of those pump spells in the same turn. So the first one is Arrestor Zeal, giving plus two plus two until enough turn, and with Addendum also gives flying. We've got Defiant Strike, drawing a card and giving plus one plus so until enough turn. Gird for battle is great, putting plus one plus one counters on each of up to two target creatures, so that can also get out of hand. God's Willing is probably the single best pump spell to combine with Feather, as a repeatable way of saving your creature from opposing removal spells, or maybe give protection so you can get past blockers to get in those last points of damage. And the Scry 1 is also great. Infuriates, a nice plus 3 plus 2, so close to a giant growth effect. Samut Sprint, plus 2 plus 1, Scry and Haste. And uh, we also have Shock as just cheap removal, not particularly synergistic with Feather, but just a nice cheap card in an aggressive deck like this. And then uh, at 2 mana, we've got some more creatures. Tithe Taker is quite good as it makes it difficult for the opponent to keep up removal to play during your turn. So it plays well alongside a bunch of pump spells, also after life 1. So we get a 1-1 token if they do kill it, so we end up with more creatures that we can target with our pump spells. Burning Prophet is also great, as it gets plus 1 plus 0 until enough turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, and also lets us scry 1. And then we also have the Arcanist, which is also another great one that also used to be played in the standard Feather decks that can recycle instants and sorceries from the graveyard based on its power. We've got Rimrock Knight as a 3-1 creature, but also the Adventure Boulder Rush is quite synergistic with Feather, since if we have a Feather in play and use the instant speed pump spell, then the Rimrock Knight will be exiled with Feather's ability instead of going to Adventure Land, so we can keep using the Boulder Rush over and over again. Robber of the Rich as a 2-2 with Reach and Haste that can provide card advantage if we have fewer cards in hand than our opponent. And Boros Challenger is our first Mentor Creatures, and Mentor Creatures in general synergize quite well with Pump Spells, as you'll be able to increase their power easily and then mentor onto other creatures. We've got a Sky Knight Vanguard to help us go wide. We've got Swift Blade Vindicator, which is a great recipient of both Pump Spells and Mentor Triggers. We've got a 10th District Legionnaire, which is also very synergistic with Pump Spells, as we get to put a plus one plus one counter on it and scry one whenever we target it. And then we get to some more interaction here and Pump Spells. We've got Battlefield Promotion, putting a plus one plus one counter on the targeted creature and gaining two life. And it also gains First Strike, so another great one 
to recycle with Feather over and over again. We've got Lava Coil as some cheap removal. Sure Strike is another nice trick, giving plus 3, plus 0, and First Strike. Justice Strike, another nice spot removal spell. And then of course Arcane Signet, a staple in every Brawl deck from now until the end of time. And Tome of Legends is also quite good in a deck like this, where our commander is pretty cheap and also has evasion, so we can uh, reliably keep attacking with it and triggering our Tome of Legends to draw more cards. Then at uh, 3 mana we've got some nice one, Bone Crusher Giant of course is great. Krenko also plays well with pump spells as we can increase its power to make more goblins. Legion Warboss is another mentor creature, as well as Tajik, which uh, can also help us mentor as well as the ability being relevant at potentially saving our creatures from non-combat damage. We've got uh, Prison Realm as more interaction. Gideon Blackblade is also great as a way to pressure decks, especially control decks, we'll have a hard time dealing with Gideon. And then at 4 mana we've got Aurelia, which also mentors and pumps up our team. We've got Conclave Tribunal as another exile based removal spell. Solar Blaze, if you look at our creatures, most of them actually survive Solar Blaze. If you look at uh, Burning Prophet, Dreadhorde Arcanist for example, Boros Challenger, and of course Feather all have more toughness than power. So with uh, Solar Blaze we can sometimes have a one-sided sweeper effect, which can be quite powerful. And then uh, Outlaw's Merriment is also a nice one to provide a steady stream of tokens. And finally, Integrity Intervention, which we often use the Integrity half to give plus two plus two into Land of Churn to get it back with uh, Feather, but every now and then we can also use Intervention as a burn spell. And then a mana base, pretty simple, 23 lands total, since our curve is pretty low. And then uh, we've got both castles, couple basics, and then all the dual lands that we can fit into the deck, basically. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're facing Ashok, a Dream Render, so some sort of blue-black mill deck. Could maybe be a Petitioner deck, we'll see. Uh, this hand is missing double white for Feather, but it is tempting to keep, because an early Krenko can also run away with the game. We'll try it. And we'll just fetch a planes right away. Player Hawk. And Krenko plus Castle Ambereth is also pretty spicy. Alright, it's gonna be a Drowned Secrets. Fair enough. Just gonna jam Krenko here and hope uh, he survives. Alright, opponent may be keeping up a counter spell here. But we already resolved uh, a pretty key threat here, so... For now, I guess we can attack. I could technically pump with Castle Embereth, which plays around a counter spell and uses my mana and makes an extra goblin. But uh, we can play two spells this turn. If the Signet resolves, we could also play Feather. Alright, they've got a Brazen Borrower instead to bounce Krenko. Fair enough. So now we could go Signet replay Krenko, or Signet replay Feather. I think I like getting Krenko down. And then next turn we maybe have the mana to play Feather and play Battlefield Promotion targeting Krenko. Murmuring Mystic is a good one, but it does mean we get to make some goblins now. And if they block the Lava Coil can finish off the Mystic as well. Yeah, let's just go for Feather and then attack, and if they block, we'll uh, Lava Coil the Mystic. Opponent hasn't played any black mana yet, so maybe they're mono blue. Both to the bottom. Fibble thip. Alright. So they are milling us, but we still have plenty of cards remaining. 
and they're about to take a lot of damage on board. Yeah, let's go for a Defined Strike here. I guess they could have another 2 mana Bounce Spell. But seems unlikely. And then I think I'm liking activating Castle Ambreth over doing anything else. So let's go for it. Make five goblins now. And then next turn, those goblins plus castle should be enough to get there. I guess they could go swamp into swamp and then cast some sort of sweeper. And yeah, there we see the first swamp. So it's not impossible. But it would have to be a Ritual of Soot to be really effective, as Cry doesn't deal with Feather or Krenko. Alright, that was a fast game with Krenko getting out of hand. On to the next one. We are facing the Royal Science. And this hand seems okay. We've got our Shock up. Turn 2 Robber, turn 3 Tajik, maybe Mentor. Contentious plan, exiled. Yeah, let's just jam Tajik here. Usually want to play Feather when we can make use of the ability in the same turn. Alright, Tails ends, counters Tajik, it's too bad. But it also would have countered Feather. And the Rimrock Knight Adventure plus Feather also works, so we get a Rimrock Knight back in hand after it gets exiled with Feather's ability. I think we just jam with the robber and then see what we exile and maybe cast some free spells instead of committing Feather into three open mana. So my opponent has six cards in hand, so we're probably fine to just attack. All right, so we exile two lands and contentious plans so far. And yeah, I guess we'll cast a Contentious Plan here, and then maybe just play a 3-1 Rimrock Knight. Seems okay. Still have plenty of combat tricks to combine with our Feather. Does get sabotaged. Pyromancer, all right. That's a scary card. But uh, now is a good window to resolve Feather. So we'll play Feather. And then I can gird for battle. And still keep up Integrity Intervention or Shock. Cavalier of Gales, can't quite play it now. Opponent takes it. I'm gonna keep up Integrity just to save our Robber of the Rich from the 3 damage from Pyromancer, potentially. Contentious plan would have been pretty nice now that we got some counters on our creatures. But so be it. So we'll attempt to save our robber. Alright, looks like uh, the Gird for Battle putting our creatures out of range from the Pyromancer is just too much. And our opponent packs it in. So another quick game, on to the next one. All right, we're facing Vraska, Golgari Queen, which as a commander lines up quite well against Feather as it can just take it out. What do we think of this hand? Missing white mana, so I don't think we can keep. 
this is better and God's willing is also pretty key. So yeah, perfect opening hands. Couple nice cheap threats and then God's willing to protect our feather. Which two drop to lead with is a question. Um, I think I'm liking Robber of the Rich. Don't get to exile any cards with it quite yet. But maybe we can combine Vindicator with Summit Sprint for a lot of damage out of nowhere. And here, Legion Warboss matches up quite well as the token gets to attack past a zombie, or at least trade for it. Or I could play a Tamboros Guildgate, so next turn we can go Feather and have God's Willing Protection up, which is also reasonable. In which case I just play Vindicator here. Uh, close call. I guess I do want to get Feather in play as soon as possible, but it's not like Legion Warboss is bad, but I guess it also lines up poorly against Vraska. I guess we still don't get to exile any cards with the Robber of the Rich here. Even if we play out the Vindicator first. Opponent chumps. Is it Vraska time? There's Vraska. Alright, that's fine. We're actually happy that they minus, because they could potentially beat Feather plus God's Willing if they minus Vraska and then also have an instant speed removal spell to back it up. So now that's no longer an option. So... Yeah, I guess we'll play our Feather. Legion Warboss would also be reasonable, but I want to make sure we can buy back the God's Willing instead of... Um, having to use it on the war boss and then no longer have access to it. So we could have easily killed Vraska, but we're just gonna establish our feather, and then we can deal with Vraska next turn, hopefully. Something like a Ritual of Soot would be unfortunate. Yep, speak of the devil, since that uh, gets around my god's willing. So that's unfortunate, but at least um, we can still pressure Vraska with the Legion War Boss. So that was kind of the worst case scenario. Alright, so Legion War Boss, and then I guess I'm tempted to somewhat sprint, even though I'm shields down on god's willing then, just to make sure we actually kill Vraska. So yeah, let's do that. Don't need Signets. If we draw land, we can just play Feather instead. So this goes there, Token goes there. Solar Blaze, not the best combo with Legion War Boss. But we do have a lot of creatures that are 1-3s or 2-3s and Feather's a 3-4, which uh, survives the Solar Blaze. So not the start we were hoping for, that Ritual of Soot definitely set us back quite a bit. And uh, can't replay Feather quite yet. But uh, I guess we'll just hit for 2 and play out some creatures. The Enforcer can't step down the token from uh, Invasion, since Convert Manacles to zero for tokens. So we're basically waiting until we have six mana to play Feather and God's Willing at the same time. land attacks. 
I guess that's okay, we'll just take it. So now the Solar Blaze would be relatively effective. Just killing our Goblin, but then killing their two creatures as well. Don't know if we need to play it now. Uh, we could instead just... Let's see, Enforcer I guess also can tap down the Forest, so it doesn't do much at the moment. But the Prophet can attack Nyssa. I guess I can send a Goblin as well. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Alright, so we'll just sure strike on the prophets. Uh, Rimrock Knight is not amazing since we can't get it back with the Arcanists from the graveyard. So I'll bottom it for now. Opponent does get to untap with an active Nissa, but only two forests in play. And uh, Arcanist, another creature that doesn't die to our Solar Blaze. Take three. Opponent passes. Kranko is not bad. So now what? I could Solar Blaze and try and get rid of Raska. I could just play Kranko and then next turn maybe set up the Solar Blaze. Yeah, I guess so. We have gods willing to protect Kranko as well. And no attacks. Alright, let's try and save our Thin Street Kingpin here. Prison Realm seems great as an answer to Nyssa. Alright, so hopefully we can either set up a nice Solar Blaze or use our Prison Realm to good effect. Gara kills Kranko. Poor Kranko, can't catch a break. Take six. Alright, uh, I think I'm okay with the Solar Blaze. That way we can maybe kill Garruk and prevent Nyssa from ultimating. And I do need to land 5 for Feather, but at this point we don't have any tricks left, so I guess we'll bottom it. And then next turn I'm probably going to be forced to Prison Realm Nyssa, although Vraska can also destroy my Prison Realm. So it's not looking great. The big turning point in this game was definitely the Ritual of Soot. Killing our Feather through our God's Willing. Otherwise we would have been looping God's Willing over and over again. And then here I guess uh, Enforcer can go. Opponent's gonna cash in their Vraska. Alright, so Prison Realm to get Nyssa, hopefully. They've already used a few ways to destroy enchantments. All the Fine Broker can get back. One of their Planeswalkers just gets a Forest. Alright. We are taking 9 damage, so we're probably just dead 
to the board here. Not sure what we can hope to draw to get out of it. But at least we didn't die to Indus Ultimate. Stone Coil Serpent for six. And that's not gonna do it. Alright, GG's. I guess we can replay Feather just to see the animation once again, and then we'll concede. On to the next one. Alright, we're facing niv Reborn, so the five color value control deck. And we've got a good one, God's Willing definitely helps in this type of matchup, so does Gideon. So an excellent opening hand. Don't think I can say no to Tajik. The ability is also relevant against sweepers like Deafening Clarion, which they could definitely have. And then we've got uh, multiple good 3 mana plays, probably going to wait on Feather until we can keep up God's Willing, but for now Gideon and Tajik are both excellent. And I think I'm leaning Tajik. opponent setting up their mana. The drawback of playing five colors is a lot of tap lands. Opponent says go. I think I start by attacking, see what my opponent does. I do miss out on potential lifelink from Gideon, but uh, don't really mind. This is not a matchup where us gaining life is all that relevant. Just to strike Tajik. So... I could, God's willing, to save it. But um, I think we can let Tajik go. And we'll play Gideon. I am here to aid in the assault. Prepare for battle. Justice Strike would not have been able to kill Challenger even if it had uh, less toughness because of Tajik's ability as well. Thought Erasure is too bad, now they can take my God's Willing. Although, who knows, they might have to take something else. But yeah, they do take the God's Willing. If we draw White Source and go Feather with God's Willing backup, it's very difficult for them to recover. Alright, more cheap removal here in Tyrant's Corn. But now we get to slam our Merriments. Could also go Feather plus Samut Sprint, which isn't bad. I don't know, it's close. This does get in a lot of damage and we're guaranteed to get our summit sprint back. So maybe it is still better to do this. And Gert for battle is good if Feather's still alive, otherwise it's not amazing. So I don't know if we should count on it. Let's bottom it. And then... Uh, don't know if it matters here. I guess we'll go for lifelink. Opponent down to 8. So just Gideon with somewhat sprint and shock is lethal. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. Even if they played niv here, they would still be pretty dead. On to the next one. We are facing Taisa Karlov, so an afterlife type deck. Don't have double white in this hand, so I don't think we're keeping... This is better. No turn 2 creature, but Arcane Signets to maybe ramp out Merriment or Aurelia. Maybe play Feather and play one mana instant in the same turn. Alright, for now we'll just play our planes. And play our Signets. Still nothing from our opponents. I guess I like playing the Merriment here, as that's less likely to be destroyed by removal. Of course, it could have a Mortify to get rid of it. Let's 
it's gonna be a Surin first. That's fine. Two one life linker from the Merriment. So playing Aurelia to attack Surin here is not bad. Could also play Tajik, mentor, and then kill Surin. It's probably better. So let's do that. And now we've got a steady stream of creatures from the Merriments. Knight of Abel Legion into Tessa. Three one trample. All right, so we've got a lot of options here. So what happens if we Aurelia? And then we can pump up Tajik, which can mentor onto one of our creatures and still have a trick up. It seems pretty appealing. Alternatively, I could play Feather and then buy back my combo trick as well. Yeah, maybe that's even better. It's close. I guess I'll go for the Feather line here. And then we can promotion Tajik. Which can then mentor onto the 3-2 uh, token. Opponent's gonna double block, I'll happily take out Tessa. Shock and deal with the Knight of a Legion. And we get our promotion back. So we definitely had a pretty good start. Giant Killer takes out Tajik. Vampire of Dire Moon. If we ever get a token that deals one damage, we can easily take out the Vampire as well. But uh, yeah, opponent packs it in. We had a ton of options here with all these tricks we can rebuy with Feather. So, don't think we're losing this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're facing Yarok, the Desecrated, so a Sultai Enter the Battlefield trigger deck. And what do we think of our opening hands? It's okay. Nothing uh, amazing, but uh, functional. Could maybe use a second combo trick. Fetching a plane so we have double white for Feather. And I'm probably playing a turn two Legionnaire. Opponent says go with two mana up. A little suspicious. Could be a Tyrant Scorn type card. In which case I don't want to jam Feather quite yet. Um, so how about we play Tithe Taker and then if they want to cast an instance they're gonna be forced to play it now before the Tithe Taker resolves and then we can maybe Rimrock the Legionnaire. And yet yeah, there's a Tyrant Scorn so that happens. And we'll pass a turn. So now we can play Feather and uh, leverage the Rimrock Knights. Or we could jam Aurelia, which is also decent. I guess we'll just play Aurelia for now. Don't mind trading for Paradise Druids. So they could play Yarok this turn. It's gonna be a Guardian Project first to draw some cards. Shock isn't bad. Alright, so now seems like a good time for Feather. Mm, 
Mantron to the Tithe Taker, and then go to Blockers, and then we'll Rimrock Knights to get in some extra damage. Opponent down to 10 already. And we get our Rimrock Knight back in hand. So if we can dodge some crazy sweeper, we should be in good shape. I guess like a Massacre Girl would be pretty good. Since that would be minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. So that would kill the entire board. So that's probably the worst case scenario. Maybe could have played around it. Alright, it's going to be Yarok instead. He draws two cards with the Guardian Project. But I'm pretty sure they're just dead to the Flyers here. As we can play a pump spell on Aurelia. Mantron to Feather. And they're pretty dead. And with Tithe Taker, we ensure that they can't really mess with our creatures here. Alright, sweet. So, got to play some games with Feather. Definitely one of the more competitive aggro brawl decks. As uh, you usually get instant value when you play Feather, followed by Pump Spell. And if you ever can combine Feather plus God's Willing, it's uh, very difficult to beat. Unless, uh, I guess, they have a Ritual Sit like in one of those games. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.